Welcome guys to the channel for another variant showcase and today I thought I'd have fun with it and showcase Rerun, one of the first bronze fighters that we got when we start playing this game. This is not a joke guys, I'm actually being serious about this and in this video, we're going to explore Rerun a bit and I want to showcase a team composition that I think is the best team for Rerun as a support which might actually be competitive. So shout out to Cutie Moon from Discord who is a big Peacock and Rerun fan that got me thinking about Rerun in the first place. So first of all, let's pull up her stats and signature abilities. We don't have to dive in too much on these because it's relatively simple. Her stats are pretty bad and you never want her to be in the front lines, which is perfect because her signature abilities are purely support. She just does things in the back. So it revolves around reducing cooldown for tagins and granting your teammates enrage when you do so. Through this, she helps your two frontline fighters get an extra bit of damage from that single enrage stack. So that's a pretty basic and honestly underwhelming ability on face value, but is there more than meets the eye here? So most people will focus on the first ability which is the free enrage upon tagin. There are variants in the game that would like this Enrage to unlock other parts of their ability such as Megasonic, Firebranded, and of course Risky Ginger. This is the most obvious and common combo that you can use Rerun in, but what about the second signature ability? This is where things get sad because there's not a lot of variants that have abilities revolving around tagins, and the ones that do are mostly bronze variants that aren't that great, or very niche variants like Lapish Luxury which you can only use once. There is, however, one other variant that I believe is the best partner for Rerun, and that is Inner Pieces. Her unique ability as a Baton Passer, a Pokemon reference for those of you who get it, or simply a transfer point for buffs upon tagins synergizes very well with both of Rerun's ability. With Inner Pieces, Rerun's Fire Element also comes into play here as it provides her another stack of Enrage upon summoning Sekhmet through a Blockbuster. This means with Inner Pieces, you can potentially stack up the Enrages gained from Rerun and Inner Pieces' own ability and transfer them to your main fighter by taking advantage of the reduced cooldown. The next question then is who should be the main fighter? Now this is a bit tricky, but from all the variants in the game, I think Dreamcatcher is a very good main fighter for this team. The synergy comes from Dreamcatcher's second ability which is to gain meter, health, and also precision when facing a stunned opponent. And I don't have to say this again, but Precision is a powerful, powerful buff to get. So how do we stun the opponent? There's two major ways. The first is through her own signature ability that stuns opponents through special moves or tag-ins. And this is of course is the synergy point for a rerun as well. The second method is through Eliza's uppercut special move that has a pretty high chance to stun the opponent when maxed out. So shout out to Alice from Discord that brought this point up as it allows Dreamcatcher to gain precision even against non-dark fighters. So I think that's enough theory for now, we're just gonna go straight into training mode so that I can show you how this team will actually work. So we are gonna start here with Dreamcatcher and when I tag into Inner Pieces, I'm gonna get that stack of Enrage and if I use a Blockbuster here, I gain another stack of Enrage and as well as Blessings because of the element. You have the uppercut, inflict stun, I tag into Dreamcatcher and not only do I get transfer of those buffs, I also get those precision stacks which is really really helpful to deal more tons of damage. So now I'm just gonna repeat again. Inflict my bombs and whoo! 100k damage, look at that. So I didn't get inflicted with the stun that time, which is unfortunate. But because of Eliza's second math loop, I can just keep on dealing tons of damage this way as well. And once, one th once that stun procs, I can switch into Dreamcatcher and do my thing to inflict a whole lot of damage. Ooh. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the marquee ability for these fighters. Since we're tagging in fighters a lot, Peacock's marquee ability, Cast Party, is very useful here to ensure our tagins are safe by being unblockable. Usually the opponent is stunned so you don't have to worry about it, but it's still a nice safety feature to have. 
The next question is whether or not to have the cast party ability on both Dreamcatcher and Rerun. Now I just want to point out that having two peacocks with a cast party marquee ability does not actually increase the chances to 100%. What happens is that there are two checks that occur. So if both Rerun and Dreamcatcher have cast party maxed out, the game will try to resolve Rerun's cast party first before resolving Dreamcatcher's cast party. I did some math and basically having two peacocks with max cast party essentially increases your success rate to land an unblockable tag-in to 75%, which is a 25% increase. And if you have three peacocks, this increases further to 87.5%. I'm not going to dwell on the math, but if you're interested, I'd be happy to explain it in the comments below. Okay, so back to the main topic. Honestly, with a lot of stuns going around, having a 50% chance on rerun alone is usually more than enough. You don't need to have cast party on Dreamcatcher as well, so the choice is up to you. But personally, I've already invested cast party in mine, so I'm just gonna stay with this. But you are free to use special features so that you can spam those special moves, those bombs, to make use of your precision hits much better. Now that we have cleared everything, we're just gonna go ahead to the gameplay to see how viable our team really is against the AI. Okay y'all, so it's time for gameplay and we're just gonna go straight into prize fights here. We're having the Diamond Fuqua prize fights. And I am in streak 36, which means the opponents have 220% bonus attack and health. Now before I choose any of these, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Um, I think it's good to go over the moves first. So for Dreamcatcher, which is mainly the star of this show, even though Rerun is the main variant for this video, Dreamcatcher is our main fighter. Now out of all these five moves, the ones that you really want and the ones that I find really useful is Immunity Taunt and these two bombs. I would have bring a third bomb but I don't have anything better and my bang 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 has 27% attack and that's mainly the reason why I use it and bang on wagon rushdown is literally just there for the stats as well I don't tend to use it. I mostly kill opponents just by using these two bombs that's all. And next we have inner pieces. Now inner pieces is a pretty standard Eliza set this is my stats it has maximum piercing almost 100% attack not quite there yet. But the main move that you really want are the three block segment blockbusters and then uppercut. If possible, uppercut level 15, great to stun the opponent and help your dream catcher get those precision stacks. So we're just gonna start here. I'm gonna have inner pieces as our first fighter because after a few tests, I found that having inner pieces as the first fighter to get those blockbusters and those enraged stacks are really helpful for dream catcher to come in and pretty much kill the enemies on the spot. So let's go! So I'm just gonna start with an uppercut here. Tag in Dreamcatcher, use two of my bombs. And then quickly tag back, get some enrage. Nice. And one is dead. I'm at five stacks of enrage, which is good. I'm just gonna go on the offense here, use the uppercut to kill the shadow puppet with precision. Nice. And there. Done. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Stun procs, get my bombs. Dead, switch back in. Just have to be careful about the wolf shoot here. Nice. Three enraged stacks. Four enraged stacks. Get the stun. 
Dreamcatcher comes in with the bombs and the gun and boom. Okay, we'll try with two double big bands. Oof, diamond big bands. So one huge weakness of this team is that you can't have inner pieces dead. I'm gonna try to stun. Okay, got the stun. Oh, that was ooh. that was risky. That could have gone really bad. I'm just gonna try to stack up my enrages here. So that Peacock can come and deal tons of damage. And quickly switch back. So we'll go with, let's try to kill Splitting Image here if it's possible. Now this is gonna be a challenge. We'll see how much damage we can deal here. Ooh. I can't stun it, which is a problem, but I can stack my enrages. That's what I'm mostly gonna count on. be a bad idea oh shoot no all those blessings though those blessing actually saved us wow I'm really scared of Somersault throwing in a tier here, that's why I went like fully offensive. Ooh, I missed that. Okay, that was a crazy fight. And we're gonna try this last. Chaos Banish to remove that thorns, that could have been problematic. Inner pieces can be really strong with Enrage. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna end it here. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you had fun watching this video. It's a bit different than what I usually do, but I thought I'd have fun with it and showcase Rerun and how she can be used as a support for this team. Honestly, the MVP has got to go with Inner Pieces. I thought Dreamcatcher is gonna be the crux of this team, but man, Inner Pieces put in a lot of work. She really is Rerun's best friend. 
Anyway, guys, that's all for me for this video. Thank you again so much for watching. Let me know what you want me to cover next. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you, guys.